Right, random board. Random board out of the pile. Wigs it is then. Every stream a different wig. <laughs> you send me wigs, I'll wear them on streams. Here's that. <laughs> random Nintendo Switch board out of my pile of about 25. Well, more than 25, actually. How many have I actually got to work on? We've got one there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Plus these ones. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. We've got twenty-six switchboards to work on. Once I fix these, if I'm able to actually fix them, I'll sell them on the store. Um, you know, I'll, I'll sell them online just to, on the online store just to recoup some of the money. Let's get rid of this thermal paste before I do anything. So yeah, not a clue what's wrong with this. I'm gonna have to put it into a housing just to find out first. Uh, so let's just check for the basics. So that's gonna be just double checking, making sure I know uh, making sure that he's got all of the required components for boot up. Let's get rid of this board. This board works. That's an exploitable board. Someone actually said the other day, oh, you, you, you always make note that things are like exploitable and exploitable firmwares or, you know, like exploitable Nintendo Switch boards, etc. But you say you don't support the hacking scene. Uh, well, yeah, because I make, make more money if they want an exploitable firmware. That's why. I've only got one unpatched switch available for sale. One. It's prompted to boot by shorting out the top two pins. Blue screen of death, of course it is. Of course it's a blue screen of death. Why wouldn't it be? Why wouldn't it be something that I need to re-ball to get working? <laughs> oh dear. Alright, let's press down on the CPU. Yeah. Of course it needs a CPU re-ball to get it working. Of course it does. <laughs> Oh yes, no parental controls, get that. Boom. All the mods are on Vigilante now because I've been on a, a mod removal spree. I've been on a banning spree, to be honest with you. Just people I'm fed up with causing trouble all the time. Right. Let's try and get rid of as much of this thermal paste as I can. Because thermal paste attracts heat. And we don't want a heat spot in a random spot. I have a working board that is banned, rang Nintendo and they won't unban it, anything I can do. Not really, mate, no, unfortunately. Uh, sadly not. Uh, I mean, there's a few people on Discord who buy banned boards, for obvious reasons, but... Uh, unfortunately, there's not really a lot that you can do, but... Uh, the problem is... Nintendo don't care who owns the board. Once it's banned, it's banned. So, first I'm going to try is a reflow because I put pressure on the CPU and it worked. It boots up. So, that could just mean that we've got cracked solder joints and that there's nothing wrong with the pads underneath. So, let's go under the scope. I'll start off slowly, preheat the board get some heat into the entire board before I do anything. I should remove that NAND before I do anything. And I'll just unplug the NAND so as I'm not putting any heat on the NAND itself. I'm at 440 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow, by the way. So for anyone, if you're watching this back of the video, if he does make a video, uh, because I'm obviously live streaming it, if he does end up making a video, and anyone's wondering 
why I'm reflowing it. People always say reflowing is bullshit. It's really not. Not in this case. Not with the Nintendo Switch because the Nintendo Switch is known for flexing issues which cracks the solar balls. So with enough flux you can reform the solder joints. One other thing that I do sometimes when I'm doing the Nintendo Switch, if I'm reflowing it, I reflow the RAM at the same time because it's not always a CPU issue, it's actually a communication issue between the CPU and the RAM. That's why you get the blue screen because you've got a communication issue. So what I would rather do is reflow the RAM at the same time just to refresh the solder joints under there as well. If we've got flex damage on the around the CPU then we can have flex damage on the RAM as well. And plus reflowing it sometimes can oxidise the pads underneath the RAM. That one's done. And that one's done. There you go. It really don't take long, but it just gives more chance of success. While that's cooling down, I'm going to inspect the um, the port, which make sure that's good. No, port needs changing. Ow, it's too hot at the minute to show you why. But that port is going to need replacing, so I'm going to do that at the same time. So if you look at the pins inside the port, number one, there's a slight split on the socket, on the actual port itself. So you can see in the middle we've got a split. That's not meant to be there. So the actual housing is coming, the actual port housing is coming away. And eventually that's going to cause charging issues and it could in turn cause other issues like M92 failure and stuff like that. But number two is the fact that the pins themselves are coming away from the actual port. So if you look at that in there, you can see that pin there and that pin there are loose. So they're meant to be sitting in like that. And they're not. So that port needs changing. So you can see that side is fine. But this side, they are starting to come away. So this port definitely needs a replacement. Uh, one thing I do, because I obviously sell these boards once I've fixed them. One thing I do with them is make 100% sure that they've been fully refurbished before they get sold. Because otherwise, I'm going to end up with warranty returns. And I don't want that. So I'd rather just replace the port now. It takes two minutes. Get the port replaced then I know I'm not going to have any issues in the future. I can just see it. Yeah, it's very slight, but it's an issue It's an issue which is developing. So it's a developing issue. It's not an issue yet, but it will be. So I'd just like to make 100% sure that the, like the consoles that I'm selling, or the boards that I'm selling, because I sell these as board only, but I'd like to make 100% sure that they're good, and that we're not going to get any issues. There's no reason for it to come back then. And then if the port does get damaged, it's on the customer. There we go. I've still got my soldering iron set at 450 degrees, it shouldn't be. Uh, my soldering iron is too hot. I was using it at 450 because I was using a really big tip earlier on. But I should be at 400 degrees, not 450. And that's the reason that the flux is just pushing away from the, um, the iron. Because the soldering iron is too hot.
Here we go. Let's grab a new port. Uh, I should probably clean that off and put some fresh flux on it. There's a little bit of thermal paste stuck to the flux. I should probably get rid of that. Doesn't actually need any fresh flux on it, but I needed to get rid of the thermal paste that was stuck on it, otherwise we're gonna get contact issues. Right, let's keep that solder flowing. There we go. So yeah, I just feel like, um, you know, do, doing the, uh, the port at the same time is the right thing to do. So let's use a tip which is way too big for the job. Just because we can. Just because we can. Why not? To get rid of that liquid damage indicator because, well, quite frankly, they're useless anyway. Do we do do do? Right, this board needs an ultrasonic. That's fine, I can do that off, off stream. Just need to give it a test, see how it's looking. So I can ultrasonic it before it goes out. Um, well, I'll ultrasonic it tomorrow off stream because it, the ultrasonic cleaner makes a lot of noise. Let's just see if that fixes the blue screen. Logo. And boot up. Boom. Yeah, buddy. There we go. Audio's working. Sound's working. Uh, display's working. Touch is working. Let's test Joy Cons. Don't know if that Joy Con's any good. Uh, let me grab a couple more Joy Cons just to double check. I think that one works. Yep, yeah. cool. Let's make sure the other Joy-Con works. Let me just grab another test Joy-Con. Yeah, batteries are dead on my Joy-Cons. Okay, well, let's just leave them to charge then. I'll test that in a minute. As long as Wi-Fi works, it should be fine. Yep, yeah. picks up my Wi-Fi. Let's just make sure it connects. Ding. Boom. Yep. That's good. Make sure it goes on to the, the uh, eShop. Yeah, system updates required. Okay. Uh, let's run an update in a minute then. Let's just check a few more things. Are these going to let me use them? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So wireless controllers are working, which means Bluetooth's working. Um, everything else seems fine. Let me just grab a test game. What better test game than Pokemon? What is it? 
Pokemon Pikachu. Yeah, let's go, Pikachu. Come on then, Pikachu. Do your stuff, mate. Boom. Good shit. Yeah, boy. Let's run an update on it because it's a non-exploitable anyway. Uh, my uh, game card modules just come out. Yeah, these are my own boards, but yeah. Uh, well, the boards that I bought off uh, eBay as a job lot. I've got like 26 boards. It's downloading updates, so it shouldn't be banned. Yeah, there we go. Uh, seems to be working. So, doesn't appear to be banned. I'll give it a full test off camera, but that looks like it's ready to be resold. Just needs an ultrasonic clean and then fresh thermal paste underneath the uh, underneath the heat shield and job done. Nice. So, blue screen of death. Fix that by reflowing the CPU and RAM. It's generally caused by, uh, so this probably will make a video to be fair because I haven't got that many on blue screen of deaths. It's generally caused by a communication issue between the CPU and RAM because these suffer with flexing. Uh, let's see if this housing, this housing is actually not that bad. Um, let's see if I've got an example of a housing that flexes. So I don't know if you can see that, but you've got a slight flex to the middle of the housing. Well, it's actually there where it suffers. So if you look there, that's directly where the RAM is on the uh, on the board. Um, some of the time it's caused by the RAM itself. Sometimes it's caused by the CPU. I've had cases where there's been like 10 or 12 torn pads under the RAM and stuff, and it's just not viable then. But um, generally, if you can press down on the CPU and it'll boot, then reflow in the CPU will work. If that don't work, press down on the RAM. If it boots when you're pressing down on one of the RAM, then reflow that. And that generally fixes it. If not, then unfortunately it's just guesswork and you reball the CPU and RAM. Unfortunately. But on this occasion, just a reflow is all it needed.